So this morning we're gonna start with Nikki at um, here, and she's gonna go over different um, fencing, animal fencing with us, and we're gonna do some hands-on work with some fencing. Hi. Hi everyone, I'm Nikki, and I am a master's candidate in sustainable science here at UMass. Before I came to school here, I have been a farmer for 18 years. When you think of animal power, what's the first animal you guys think about? Goats. Goats. Goats, interesting. Anybody else? Horse. Horse. Like, what power do they give to the farm? With a horse and a mule, let's start there. Telling power. Yeah. yeah. Labor. Like draft power, right? Like you're moving things. You're like attaching equipment to these animals. And your what would a goat? Um, how would a goat benefit with animal power? Well, over other animals, the efficiency of what you get out your inputs versus your outputs. Okay. Goats are extremely efficient per acreage for the amount you keep. And what will they do for the land in the way of power? Oh, the power of a goat can also not just be grazing and keeping your pastures down, but it can also be helping you with your fence lines. So if you oftentimes, if you're on an old farm, you'll have like a bunch of rocks, right? And then you'll have a ton of multifloral rows, which we all hate because it grows so quickly. You can fence in the goats in that area <clears throat> at a certain stage of the multiflora production, and they will actually help manage that. That is power, right? Like if you're utilizing them to try and help maintain different parts of your farm by addressing what their strengths are and what their <coughs> needs are. The important thing with animal power is fencing, <laughs> is good fencing, so that you know that your animals are contained in an area safely from predators or whatnot. And there's different kinds of fencing. So today, we're gonna actually go out to the field and we're gonna put up fencing this morning. Okay, I'm gonna need some volunteers though because there are some things we need to bring up. We have three poultry fences out here that are nice and heavy and we need to carry them all the way out into the backfield. So I need three volunteers. I have one right there. How are we doing on length? I think you have good enough to go all the way around to where we are. That's what I was thinking in next year. Sadie, tell me what you're doing. We are learning how to put up fencing for animals. This is for What goat. is this one for? Goats? This is for goats. It's harder than I thought. <laughs> We setting are. up a fence for cows. We still have, wait, we still have a couple mound. more. But do you see the versatility that you can have with this? And at, um, sometimes you can train your goats. Like if for those of you who are really into goats, you can train goats on this. As long as they really, they learn how to respect it. You're gonna want it to be really hot. And so we'll go over like how to set up your electric fence after we look at everyone's fencing. But you're talking like, you want it to be like, in my opinion, like 7,000 volts of electricity. If you have one of these fences, I'd say like 3,000 is totally going to keep them in because they're not going to really like try and go through that fence. They will try and go through this. I am trying to untangle this fence so we can have happy, safe sheep. <laughs> and I'm pretending to help. <laughs> and are you successful? Uh, to be determined. Yeah, maybe if we just... Yeah, I think we're going to have problems. So you guys, this is the perfect riding ring. Woo! Yay! This is like, it looks really nice. You guys did a really good job. How was it for you? Way harder than we thought. Yeah. We played know, with like, like the angle. Yeah. Yeah, because you kind of have to put yeah. them in at a slight angle to keep it from like... All flipping in. Right. That right. kind of helps. So after we look at everyone's, we're going to act... I'm going to have you roll them up. And I'll show you the correct way to roll them up because when you roll them up, that's the most important part, really. Um, so this looks good. We're going to move on to... Um, so, yeah, we'll have to do two sections. So the fence is on. This... It's on fast too, so you... you I don't you know if I would touch it right now. <laughs> I, would, I would just wait. Do okay, it. let me just see how no, hot it is. Get it on the camera. So when you are testing your ground, you do want to make sure that you're putting it into a good ground. Not like a super rocky, or remember how I was telling you before that sometimes there's some grounds that aren't so great? This one feels pretty good. So this is not... Oh, 3.61. So like 
and then the ground is so the fence is not as hot as the ground so that's our problem right we need to make the ground stronger and so you'll see and you'll see the pulps when you're looking at this so you see 0.11 and then it goes 3.3 it usually shows you the pulps first but but now it's 3.48 